It said everyone has a story. China has almost 1.4 billion of them. From the mega cities to the vast countryside, from the ancient to the ultra modern, it's our job to bring these stories to you direct from one of the most rapidly changing nations on the planet. I'm Britton Clenard and we are rediscovering China. An increasing number of Chinese people are opting for cosmetic surgery. What's motivating them to go under the knife and what challenges lie ahead for this expanding industry? We like foreign girls. We investigate China's growing love of the nip and tuck. Make, make Full. Full. One of the world's oldest civilizations has, over the past few decades, witnessed huge transformation. For people in modern China today, especially the growing middle class, rising income levels are generating a greater range of choices. Among them is the option of changing their appearance. Plastic surgery here is on the rise. The industry is now worth 62.6 .6 billion US dollars annually, a figure that's expected to double by 2019. So why are more and more Chinese people going under the knife in the name of beauty? We're going to visit clinics and operating floors to find out what's fueling China's cosmetic surgery boom. Our first port of call is a makeup room to speak to someone who's in the business of ensuring that people look good. Hi, Hu Lei. Hi. For more than 10 years, makeup artist Hu Lei has painted the faces of thousands of news anchors and TV stars. Out of all the people that you, mm -hmm. the celebrities or artists or, or mm -hmm. you know, actresses, mm -hmm. how many do you think have mm -hmm. had surgery? Um, more than 60%, I think. More than 60%. Do you worry that in China too many women are addicted to plastic surgery? Yes. I think um, it will leave people greedy, you know. You can stop the desire of, um, mm. of, of, of being beautiful, more beautiful. This pursuit of perfection has become big business. The China Association of Plastics and Aesthetics is predicting astronomical growth for the industry over the next few years, making China the third largest market in the world after South Korea and Brazil. The majority of those opting for cosmetic enhancement are not surprisingly under 35, and again, not surprisingly, most are women. But the figures for men are rising sharply. In 2015, the number of men undergoing surgery doubled from a year earlier. While there are a range of factors driving demand, analysts agree that South Korea, the world's most cosmetically enhanced nation, is having a big influence on its Asian neighbors. South Korean pop stars, with their surgically improved faces, are hugely popular in China. That's also made South Korea a top destination for young Chinese seeking a nip and tuck. We get the strong influence by the Korea. An, an oriental nose mm. is so beautiful with this part, mm. but but some of want there to be them to be a high, bridge. high, yes, yeah. and they and they do it very white, you know. Mm. It's less like a wonder. 
Avatar. Avatar, yes. Yeah. Spirit of Avatar, you know, yeah. <laughs> this part. It's so strange, you know. Right. I can't bear that. <laughs> 中国是一个非常传统的国家，讲究内敛、科技的。中国有一个语言叫做“身体发肤，受之父母，不敢毁伤”。理论上讲呢，中国人是不接受身体的这样巨大的、像整形美容外科这样的变化。但是其实就是在
，你也愿意。哇、wow. 哦、嗯，从侧面来看，这个曲线就会好一点。嗯，但是你呢，恰恰相反，你需要把这个骨质让它变宽。You can visualize how your face can change, and in ways that you you've never really perhaps thought of before. And I guess visualizing it, being able to、um, picture what you would look like with these changes, kind of makes it all the more tempting. Twenty-four-year-old postgraduate student Yang Dongyan is at the Bandar Chu to undergo her double eyelid surgery. It's by far the most common procedure in China. 觉得自己变漂亮以后，更更加有自信嘛。然后觉得应该找个会更更帅一点的男朋友。你喜欢呃是呃网红的？在在在。好。昨天晚上失眠了都，太紧张了。Young has forked out the equivalent of 720 U.S. dollars for this procedure. That's a little pricier than most clinics in the city. But Dr. Jin has a reputation for sculpting the perfect pair of double eyelids. <laughs> Dr. Jin prides himself on what he calls his oriental approach to cosmetic surgery. He believes in preserving the characteristics unique to Chinese eyes. Performing double eyelid surgery has become second nature to Dr. Jin. After all, he's been doing it for 21 years. You comfortable? Yes, very. After just 20 minutes, Young's operation's over. Back at the hospital, 22-year-old Cheng tells me she's excited about finally liking how she looks in photographs. Her surgery is a little more complicated. So this young lady is just 22 years old. She's already got double eyelids, but she wants to make them more pronounced and deeper. She's also getting incisions here so that her eyes will be longer. She's kind of been whimpering through the whole operation. She's clearly a bit nervous, a little bit scared, but I guess that's the price she's willing to pay for beauty. <laughs> In not long, Cheng will be graduating from university and entering the workforce. Job applications in China often require a photograph to be submitted along with a candidate's CV, a sign, so many people argue, of how commonplace is discrimination based on looks. That spurred a belief among young people that having cosmetic surgery is a shortcut to a better career. I really appreciate you. I have a patient who was a former online channel host. He was not very famous at the time. When he did the show, he was more confident. So his fans have increased. He was from a common girl to a woman. 变成了一个呃富婆吧，可以这么说。It's becoming a more common story in China as these internet celebrities, known in Chinese as Wang Hong, gain popularity. They're known for hosting online videos and posting photographs of themselves wearing sponsored clothing, seen by their thousands of online fans. If you ask most people in China to tell you what a Wang Hong girl looks like, they'll almost always give you the same description: pointed chin, round eyes, fair skin, and a high-bridged nose. In a recent survey, only 10% of China's internet celebrities admitted to having had surgical work done. 
Still, they all look so similar that Wong Hong face has become a well-known term here. We visit Dr. Shue, who's built a reputation creating Wang Hong faces. I've done many surgeries to create some Wang Hong. I'm a great affected by the Western culture. So I like the face to be more uh, special in a way they call Hun Xie. They are Chinese girls, but they have some features of the Western girls. Wang Hong people is a very鼻梁拱顶起来眼睛巨大外眼角一开那个什么那个那个美瞳戴起来就是中间给我立体感全弄起来顶起来它比西化还西化又不是西化<笑> 大体混血混的都是往红换你想做成网红款吗但是我不想要网红那么夸张的就是比自然偏再偏一点夸张我要特别夸张那种你觉得他们都好像一样好像一样对我就想要这种小俏皮<笑> <你觉得, 笑> To get a look into what goes on behind the scenes, we catch up with an internet celebrity who's so open about her cosmetic procedures that she now blogs about them. Although Chen Dada hasn't opted for one of the more extreme Wang Hong styles, her transformation is still quite dramatic. You look a lot happier here. <laughs> like most of the people we've spoken to who have undergone plastic surgery, Tendada was motivated by a personal story. In her case, she'd chased a man for seven years without any luck. She's convinced it's because she wasn't pretty enough. Do you think the pressure from society impacts your decision to get surgery so much? Society is a bit cruel to people that they don't deem good looking. Chindada decided to go to South Korea, the plastic surgery capital of the world. With a new face, she hoped people would take to her better. The 26-year-old says the operation changed her life. 其实我对世界的看法从来没有变过，对吧？变的是别人对我的态度跟看法。让我们一起来看一下瘦脸针。Each week, Chandada hosts a video in which different cosmetic procedures are tested while she explains how they work to her 50,000 fans. 在我自己的公众号上面，或者是说一些网站上面，我会去剖我自己的这些视频，还有就是一些教程或者是一些贴士，告诉他们怎么样去合理科学的一些变美。This week she's talking about non-surgical procedures. One of them, botulinum toxin or Botox, is now a hot choice among young Chinese women. There's a domestic brand available, costing up to 400 US dollars per injection, lasting for about six months. In the West, Botox is often used to smooth out wrinkles, but here in China, it's used to give the impression of a narrower jaw. So Botox is a non-surgical procedure, much like hyaluronic acid, which is injected into the lips to make them look bigger. That's kind of what the Kardashians and other celebrities use to give them those big 
fishlets. Non-surgical procedures, known sometimes as lunch break cosmetics, are becoming the industry's big sellers. Typically, they can be performed in an hour, less time than a woman would usually spend at the hairdressers. Another is getting an injection into her legs to make them look smaller. Um, I think they're already pretty small. Do you think you're addicted? So when do you think you'll you'll stop? While Chandada's path to perfection has been relatively smooth, achieving the ideal face can be risky business. Jin Wei Kun is an aspiring actress and the victim of a string of bad operations. It began when she made the decision to have a breast enlargement back in her hometown in Shanxi province. 当时造成的情况，胸部的问题挺严重的，国内的一些医生是没有办法来治疗的，所以说当时我就想到了市区韩国。我是金内坤，然后我就是。With no legal recourse for compensation and not enough money to pay to fix the problem, she agreed to participate in a television show jointly produced by South Korean and Chinese companies called Bucket List Two. The deal was that the bill for her breast surgery would be covered. But she'd also have to have an additional 12 operations on her face. These operations also ended badly. Her chin was left lopsided and the implant along her nose wasn't fitted correctly. Jin still experiences regular numbness in her jaw. Her case isn't unique. Thousands of Chinese have returned from South Korea disfigured after being targeted by unregistered clinics. Back in China, a lack of regulation also seems to be an issue, especially when it comes to non-surgical procedures. It's estimated that only 20% of China's hyaluronic acid injections have been approved by regulators. According to the country's Cosmetic Surgery Association, the components are largely fake or smuggled, and up to 100,000 clinics are administering the injections without a license. We all know that aesthetic surgeries, uh, we can do a lot of money mm. with, with it, but you have to be well trained. Mm. You have to be a doctor first. Mm. If you are not a doctor, maybe you are a criminal. As the demand for plastic surgery in China grows, so do the opportunities to make big bucks. Dr. Shui hopes the industry will become more regulated as the market grows. Despite several more reconstructions, Jin still isn't completely satisfied with how she looks. She complains that her nose is too pointy, her cheeks too hollow. But she's pledged never to undergo major surgeries again and wants to focus instead on growing her craft. <laughs>
最初的一阵痛。其实人生就是这样，对吧？不一定每一天都会有彩虹，但是我们可以学着让自己变得开朗一点。这，放心吧。他们太乱了，你进来。Every Wednesday afternoon, a long queue forms outside Dr. Jin's office. One by one, he calls the people in for a consultation. 这个在头发里这边有一个，现在是穿越化。大家想一想，再想做，他其实做。He tells us he refuses to operate on a third of them, since he considers their requests unrealistic. Generally, we need to do a complete review. If this patient is in a stable state, he is very unstable. We cannot give him what he wants. Low self-esteem is a common issue among young people. In China, the onus is on the doctor to deem whether someone is suffering from something more serious. This could be body dysmorphic disorder, a psychiatric condition in which a person has a warped perception of his or her body and is obsessed with changing it. Zhen Yong's this guy, the Qiu Mei Zhe, their mental problems, I think is a big issue. It should get more attention from the mental health profession. But this is a big hole. 实际上，中国在各种文化里面有一个非常特色的文化，就是面子文化。在这种市场经济情况下，对人的外表越来越重视，一个看脸的时代。I'm eager to know if, in striving for beauty, we've become a society obsessed with perfection, and what role the media play in this. Okay. There is some concern that there's too much pressure on women to be beautiful. And then some would say that the fashion industry and the beauty industry, including magazines like Vogue, are perpetuating the problem. What would you say to that? Yeah, I mean, certainly we celebrate beauty. You know, we celebrate all kinds of beauty, sophistication. But when we celebrate beauty, we also mix it with a sense of positivity. You know, I, I always say that a woman, if you look at me, I'm not like the traditional beauty, but I think I'm confident. I myself, I'm at ease with myself, and I feel that's, that's fine. I work with so many models, with so many celebrities. I don't feel that I have a problem standing next to them. It's about how you look at yourself. Yes. And does Liu Wen have that charisma? No, I think say? from the beginning. She Liu Wen is not only hailed as China's first oh, supermodel, well, she's right? also being championed for changing beauty standards in the country. Yeah, uh, it's important. She could have gone on the route of a lot of Asians. You know, she's slightly darker color, you know, relatively speaking. And she could do the Korean thing, you know, put all the white foundation, turn her into somebody else. But she did not do it. Something else she didn't do was have double eyelid surgery. By celebrating her single eyelids, she's helping deliver a message to young Chinese women that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. Angelica Jung makes it very clear that she doesn't judge anyone for undergoing surgery. However, she says it has to be for the right reasons. The key question here is why you do it. If people you go to do plastic surgery because you want to become somebody else, even if the plastic surgery, you know, that process was super, super successful, you are still not going to be happy with yourself. I really advise young girls to read more, watch good movies, travel more, open up their eyes and look at different lifestyles and cultures. And basically, there's no shortcut. The more you know, the more you learn, the more you look at yourself with a pair of clear eyes. There's no way else to, to improve oneself. You just have to keep working on it. I'm working on it still. Okay.